Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'll be sharing with you how to launch a Node.js web application into AWS Elastic Beanstalk. And you're doing this using GitHub and Code Pipeline. Let's start. I'm going to show you the simple web Node.js web application that I've uh, that ChatGPT helps me to come up with. Basically, this is the Node.js server and this is the front end web. And I've also uh, set up this uh, package.json let, let me run this so that you can see what we are expecting okay so if nothing goes wrong this will be deployed in AWS Elastic Beanstalk let me go here hold on Let me start this first. Okay, so let's start with creating the environment. I think this is seven. Six. Okay, let's start with creating the environment. Then after that, we're gonna make some changes here gonna leave this default gonna choose node.js because I'm running node.js server and we're gonna keep everything as default we're gonna click next for here we're gonna use I uh, you can create and use new service role but right now I already created one so I'm gonna use existing one then I'm gonna make sure that my instance profile in my EC2 instance is able to SSM in I don't have the habit of using SSH so I'm gonna make sure this EC2 uh, this EC2 instance profile has this SSM policy. I'm gonna click next. Then I've already pre-configured default VPC. Okay, this is the part you have to pay attention because Elastic Beanstalk only works if your EC2 instance is in a in a public subnet. It doesn't work if it's launched in a private subnet with Net Gateway. So like this I'm not going to use any database so I'm going to keep it empty I'm going to click next okay here's where I want you to pay attention you see from this blue pop-up box it says that starting October 1st Amazon EC2 auto scaling will no longer support the creation of launch configuration for new accounts so what this means that for me at least if I choose root volume type as container, I will encounter error. So for this demonstration, I'm just going to use GP3. I'm going to keep everything as default. I'm going to use the default security group. I'm going to keep everything as default. And I'm going to click next. I'm going to close this. If you're first starting out launching your web application in Elastic, Bean, uh, Elastic Beanstalk, I would highly recommend that you use logs. So I'm going to click check here. I'm going to make sure the logs deleted after I terminate the resource. I'm going to uncheck here because this is just demonstration. I'm going to keep everything uh, as default. Okay, the interesting part is EC2 is actually, this Elastic Beanstalk is actually running uh, proxy server inside this EC2 so I'll show you later it's interest I mean interesting to know then uh, that's where the nginx will produce the logs that we can use to troubleshoot if anything happens I'm gonna delete this I'm gonna click next let me recap some of the settings will be using CloudWatch so the policy on your instance profile has to has has to have this this is what I've configured for my instance profile on top of having an SSM policy I also give it a CloudWatch I also give it a CloudWatch logs full access because it needs to generate streams into the CloudWatch so for this demonstration, I'm just going to ignore all security best practices. Okay, so if you click submit, 
All these are running behind the scenes using cloud formation. So if any red highlights uh, does turn up, you can actually look at the logs here or you can actually uh, SSM into your EC2 and uh, identify what's going on. So right now it's running S3 bucket. It's pulling stuff from S3 bucket. So it's producing some logs. Let's look at clock formation. Okay, so where we are at cloud formation and we just look at the 06 is completed. There's no error. Let me expand and see whether if there's anything that I should be concerned of. Let's go back. Everything is green and blue. Great. Okay, so the instance deployment is completed. And if nothing goes wrong, we should be able to see this okay great our web application a sample web application is up on aws elastic beanstalk right now we're gonna push the codes from github through code pipeline and deploy it onto this aws resource we're gonna create the pipeline first i'm gonna choose build custom pipeline i'm gonna call this i'm gonna call this zero two we're gonna keep everything as default. There's a there will be a role, a default role to be created here. And we're gonna click next. We're gonna click GitHub. Hmm. Takes longer than usual. Okay, great. So we're gonna connect to GitHub. I've already created something similar here. So my repository, let me show you an example. You basically click, uh, you define your connection name. Then after that, then after that you connect, you define, then you connect to GitHub. So I'm going to skip that. Then uh, after that, it will ask you to show your repository. Then after that, you click on the main branch here. Okay, then after that, this is where you select your action. You choose Elastic Beanstalk. Then after that, you choose the application name of from the environment that you created. And this is what you, you can choose this which I've just created then after that you choose the environment and you click done click I'm gonna save this just to show you this is the new elastic beanstalk environment that we created and I've made changes to it and I'm gonna rerun so if you it's re relying on GitHub repository. So if I make changes to my GitHub, it should trigger the pipeline. Yeah, it did. It did shows that I created this and it's in progress and in a few minutes we will see this deployed to our new environment which is this now we wait okay great so right now the pipeline shows that it's successful let's look at the events in the elastic beanstalk nothing Nothing is out of the ordinary. Let's refresh this and cross our fingers. Great. So right now I'm able to deploy out my codes from GitHub into AWS Elastic Beanstalk using Code Pipeline. And I did it without any challenges. Actually, I did have some challenges.
throughout this process you encounter any issues all you have to do is to SSM into your EC2 instance let me show you what I mean because I'm not using SSH I'm using SSM endpoint okay let me show you what's inside so so even though my codes so even though I did a uh, port 3000 I also allow it to have to pull in environment variable so there is some environment variable that is running in the EC2 that is able to change the port the in my initial port from 3000 to 80 interesting thing is there's actually an in nginx running see and where your code lies your code lies here This is where all your code lies. So there is a nginx running as, that acts as a reverse proxy or proxy server that's redirecting all the internet traffic to your codes. That's all for today. I hope you enjoy what I've shared in this video. If you've got any questions, leave your comments, leave your questions in the comments below and I'll try my best to get back to you. Bye.